It's time for another edition of Grizz Classics Chalk Talk, and we're going back to 2003 for the sixth episode already. It's been fun during this quarantine social distancing age we're going through right now to have these Chalk Talks. This is edition number six, better known as the Triple Option Game. In 2003, Coach Houck's first season as the head coach, fourth game, he decides to pull a red shirt off of a true freshman in Kyle Sampson, who played quarterback, to run the veer or triple option. Then, of course, Justin Green, a star in that game, over 120 yards and a touchdown. Coach, there's a lot to get into before we even start the film on this one, including the secrets. But just kind of give us the the run-in of when you decided to go to this and kind of set up the week that was to prepare for this game. Well, I will, and uh, at the conclusion, we'll get a chance to let uh, Kyle do a little infomercial on his football program at uh, Montana Tech as well. We're big fans of him being the new head coach there. So great to have everybody on. This was uh, this has been a lot of fun uh, for me personally to get back looking at these games and talking about them, uh, and uh, it's it's uh, I think we're getting better at it, despite me stumbling through that. So. <laughs> The uh, the setup to this was was uh, interesting. We had we had both our our uh, quarterbacks were hurt. Craig Oaks and Jeff Disney were both out. Um, we really didn't know how we were going to go make an attempt at winning this game. Idaho at the time was a, a Division One uh, FBS football program. They had eighty five scholarships to R sixty three. Watching the film, I really thought that uh, that they were better than us, and they had more more ability. They were healthier. Um, their head coach, this guy named Tom Cable, who went on to be the head coach of the Oakland Raiders, uh, also was a good friend of mine, fishing partner, and we had worked together at Colorado. So we kind of knew what we were we were up against. Uh, we we weren't sure how we were going to get the job done. So what we the conclusion we came to. Uh, is we were gonna we were gonna give them some new wrinkles. Part of that was the the triple option, the, the veer, and and uh, some loaded stuff that uh, we were gonna have Kyle dump his redshirt year and come run. Uh, we were also gonna give him some new wrinkles with the fly sweep, which was not uh, something that was being run a lot at that point of time, and then plays off it. So we thought that uh, we were pretty good on defense. Uh, we thought that we were good on the, the special teams part of it. And so our plan was to play to our defense and our special teams, uh, not goof it up on offense, give them some new wrinkles, get it to the fourth quarter, and then, uh, and then try, to, try to get after them. So uh, with that, what's your guys' recollection of that? Go ahead, Kyle. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that uh... – you know, as a as a young pup and a redshirt receiver at the time, uh, you know, I was a high school quarterback and um, obviously wasn't the biggest guy. So the uh, coach recruited me as a wide receiver and uh, was loving that, but uh, always had a an itch to to possibly get back to playing quarterback. And when coach came to me, I remember it was uh, it was the Sunday morning. Uh, we had a bye week, um, you know, so we had two weeks to prepare. And he he called me in and. Um, basically said, Hey, we want to, this is our plan and this is what we want to do. Are, are you ready to do it? And uh, I was super excited and, you know, yes, sir, I'll, I'll do whatever you need to do. And, um, you know, so we, we practiced it for two weeks and uh, we go into the stadium with, you know, closed, closed meeting and everything and, and do our option package. I think the biggest thing for me though, was um, number one, coach had the belief in me uh, to be able to do that. But number two, I think that, uh, you know, the support I had from the players, uh, I was just a, a young freshman um, that never played a game at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Um, it's a true freshman and uh, guys like Justin Green and Dylan McFarland and, and guys like that that um, were, were seniors at the time. Um, you know, I'm sure they had some doubt in their minds uh, bringing me in, but uh, they sure as heck didn't show that to me. They were super supportive of me um, and gave me confidence that we could go out and execute. Um, you know, and to me, that's, that's what great coaches do and, and great teammates do is they give you confidence. Um, and so to me, as a, as a young pup, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I wasn't a little bit nervous going into this game and, and in front of, you know, 27,000 people in my first college game. But uh, 
uh, my teammates and my coaches gave me extreme confidence and and that allowed us to be successful and by by no means was I any reason that we won um, you know we had a tremendous offensive line I think three of those guys ended up playing in the NFL we had two running backs one of them that I'm sitting here talking to tonight uh, Justin and then Lex were both ended up being in the NFL I mean that that those the running backs and the O-line and the receivers that I was surrounded by uh, were tremendous and obviously like coach mentioned we had a tremendous defense um, you know very veteran that year um, and then uh, special teams wise you know we were that was always our edge and, and it's continued to been coach Houck's edge ever since where he's been and, and will always be at the University of Montana and um, just, I was just super, extremely excited to be a part of it. Um, you know, I remember coach, it was kind of a funny conversation. He said, you know, you can't tell anybody. The only person you can probably call is your dad. And, uh, you know, I, was, I remember calling my dad and at first he's like, what are you talking about? But, uh, you know, he was a head coach at, at Capitol at the time. And that was an exciting time for me to be able to tell my dad, who was my high school head coach that I was going to be playing, playing for the Grizz that weekend. And, um, you know, that, that it, it's definitely a great memory in my career. And, um, you know, I didn't, I wasn't at Montana uh, super long because my dad became the head coach at Northern. I ended up transferring, but, um, you know, that was a, a, a very fun year for myself and something that I think uh, I, I learned a lot uh, from that, from that, from that game and, and that season. How about you, Greeny? So I had some insider information, um, but this was my, so being my first year at Montana, I had actually took a trip to Idaho right before I took a trip to Montana. And as I was meet, meeting with the players and talking with the players and hanging out with those guys, they were asking me, you know, hey, what do you what do you have going, you know, as far as being recruited? And, you know, I told him, I said, hey, I just got a call from the Montana coach and I'm going to trip out there next week. And every single player said, you want to go to Montana? <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, like, he goes, he goes, this place is, has no comparison to Montana. You're going to go to Montana and we'll, we'll play against you next year. You know, fast forward to it, it comes to that point. It was it was a knowing their mentality and their mindset of those guys that that uh, had me on the recruiting trip. I, you know, I felt really good about our, our opportunity as far as as far as playing these guys. Uh, for me, it was a it was my first start. Uh, this was the the first the first game I started, and uh, it was exciting exciting for me to be as far as you know being ready to go and have an opportunity that I've always wanted as far as playing college football. And just, it was just going to be a good, a good deal. Uh, this was my time to say, all right, this is, you know, my, my goal and my thought process was uh, I, I'm going to start every game here on out for, uh, for being here at the university of Montana. So um, it was an exciting, exciting opportunity for me. Uh, and as far as the triple A option, the coach Sherbeck was the, was huge as far as what I remember uh, of us really kind of going through getting the triple option stuff down the mesh points. We, we, I mean, we stayed after practice and worked mesh over and over and over and over and over again, um, which was different from, you know, what we had been, we'd been doing um, prior to that point. So, you know, I, I definitely credit coach Sherbeck to be able to come in and really kind of just be there as, and, and point us in the right direction. Coach, give us kind of the, the setup here with how you decided to go with this route. And I know your time at UW as well, a quarterback by the name of Marcus Tuiasasopo ran this, and that was maybe an influence as well. So kind of give us a, a little bit of the background of how you decided to do this. Yeah, in fact, I was uh, you, you, you jumped ahead on me, Riley. I was going to show a couple of those plays and talk about that, but I'll go ahead and do it now. Uh, so at Washington with Marcus, we, we did run a um, pretty extensive option package. It, we could throw it too. It wasn't like we were an option team, but we got good at the triple option. And it helped us beat people like the Miami Hurricanes with, who were ranked second in the country and, and had 17 future first round draft choices on the roster. So uh, it's a great equalizer, always has been, always will be. And so I basically grabbed some Washington cutups and walked into the Sunday morning, walked into the uh, offensive coaches offices and, and said, this is uh, going to be a major part of, of our plan for Idaho. It's going to give us a chance. And then I laid out the other part that, uh, that you mentioned and I'll get to coach Sherbeck and some of the things here when we watch Kyle run the option here in a few plays, but uh, I do, uh, you know, I, I laughed at Kyle saying he was nervous. I said, you think you're nervous, brother? I was nervous. I, re I remember uh, getting up that morning and having coffee with, with my wife, Stacy, 
I don't know, early in the morning and I was kind of quiet and she says, well, what's the deal? And I said, well, in about 10, 10 hours, uh, people that follow Grizzly football are going to think I'm one of the smartest guys in the state, or they're going to think I'm the dumbest SOB that they ever let coach here. And uh, so that was kind of the, the pressure I felt on that morning. And, and uh, I'm glad it worked out the right way. So with that, we can, we can, uh, we can look at some of this stuff. It'll be fun to talk about. This is Jefferson Heidelberger right here. John Talmadge right here. Lavander Seegers right here. Justin Green right here. Some of those great old linemen that uh, Kyle mentioned there. Justin Hartman here. And I think this is Brad Weston right here at the wing, if I don't miss my guess. And so what we did here is we, uh, we ran a, a fly sweep here. We took it from the center. Jefferson came across, and he's going to get the ball there. And you're going to see some great blocking. You're going to see a great run. And, and what we did was we opened the game with this play. This is the very first play. Uh, from scrimmage of the game. They had kicked the ball out of the end zone. We, uh, they didn't let Jefferson get it, get his hands on it in the return game. And so we handed it to him on the first play of the game, and you'll see what happens. But the blocking's outstanding on the edge. Safety kind of takes a bad angle, and people just stay with it. The end zone view of this is terrific. Uh, the patience here at the end of the run, you can see Seeger's coming here and making a block. That's just great effort. Jefferson waits on him. Uh, just an unbelievably good effort by uh, by a whole bunch of dudes there. But you'll see, uh, actually, Greeny, that's JR. I'm sorry. Got to give JR his credit. We, I mean, this was such an uncommon play. We didn't even have it timed, the fake or any of it timed out very well off the offensive play. But we get body on body. You'll see Weston with a great block on the edge. You'll see Talmadge with a great block out here. He drives the guy into the bench. That's just an unbelievably good job. And Jefferson was a great kick returner, and this looks like a kick return. So heck of a heck of a big play, and that's a great way to start the game. Uh, you know, you think you're up against it. You're not sure if you can score points at all. Like you're going in the game going, well, I hope we don't get shut out, first of all. And then you go 80 on the first play of the game, and you're on the board. You can see everybody's uh, pretty fired up. So we move into the game. And these next two plays are – they're just a couple – our defense was pretty good. Uh, felt like we had a good plan, and we get a couple of uh, uh, nice third-down stops here. As I mentioned, uh, we were going to play to our defense and our special teams, and we get a couple of – you know, there's just some – some really good plays here. We're moving on. We're not moving the ball great. It's still 7 nothing. We're moving through the the uh, first quarter here, and we're just we're kind of getting after them. They're not they're not doing anything, and we give our we give ourselves a chance. So, a couple of great third down stops there by our defense. A pretty salty bunch, and then uh, with 4:40 left in the in the first quarter. Um, in comes Kyle. And so here he is. And, and, you know, you look at the formations we've run over the years, we were not in the open field in I formation pro personnel ever. And so a couple of anecdotes here. I, I remember, you know, Greeny touched on it. <clears throat> I remember, you know, we closed practice, a bunch of buddies usually come to practice uh, were mad at me, but we felt like we couldn't let these guys, over on this bottom sideline down here, know what we were doing. So uh, in comes Kyle. He was wearing 85, I believe, jersey number. I, I had buddies who were talking to me. They're pulling out their programs and looking at it going, who the heck's 85? <clears throat> and then uh, they're like, holy cow, he's playing quarterback. Who is he? But it, Kyle was about, I don't want to shortchange you, Kyle, but you were definitely not a six-footer and definitely not a five-tenner. Uh, those old linemen were all six five or better. You disappeared when you walked into the huddle. But the thing that gave me the most comfort leading up to it, or, or of any of it, was you were really in charge when you stepped into the huddle and you you looked natural at it. So you didn't show you were nervous, and I hope I didn't either. Uh, Justin mentioned Coach uh, Hal Sherbeck, who's 
the winningest coach in the history of California junior college football. And Hal was retired, living up at Flathead Lake at the time. And he would come down and spend three days uh, a week with us. And he, he was, you know, everybody's got these analysts and consultants now. Uh, Hal was our consultant way back in those days. And, and he, it was discomforting to me because we were into our option period at practice and we do something. I thought it looked pretty good. And I'd, I'd look over and Hal would have his hand here and he'd be shaking his head. And I, I, you know, I'm a 37 year old first time head coach coaching his third game. And I'm like, this isn't good when the guy that's coached uh, more games than, uh, than I've seen in a lifetime is shaking his head and going, that's not good. It's not good. So Hal gave us some finer points of it as Justin mentioned. And I just, uh, think it was a you know the fly sweep deal we watched that play where they all were going the wrong direction and we hand it off and then in this deal we line up formations they haven't seen and this put them on their heels that that first play at the fly sweep and then our triple option stuff in my opinion um, put them on their heels for the rest of the day and we're just going to see it's just true triple option there's a this is loaded there's a, a cursory fake to the fullback here, and then he's going to go cut the backer. And Kyle, we'll let you talk through it. Yeah, um, you know something that was, you know, cool to me is this is something I grew up on was running option, and so this was not not new to me. Um, but like you said, just a, just a basic, uh, you know, outside loaded option here, uh, where basically the option was either pitch it or run it as the quarterback. Um, and uh, you know, great blocks up front. I think that's Big Willie Walden there at tight end. It um, is. I think Weston's playing fullback here. It um, is. And I think that's Lex at tailback, if I'm if I'm right. That is um, Lex. And uh, obviously you can tell just the uh, great job up front. I mean, the huge gap to run through. Um, yeah, that's that looks pretty good there. I don't know. Yeah, I probably should have scored. <laughs> and you only got like 20, but I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to give my I got to break a damn tackle. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Anyway, that was good. So we're we're into it. We're moving it on and. And we kept running in there and running this thing. And it was really successful. Uh, we didn't put on the play down the road here where, where you threw a pick. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the objective was to chuck it down the field and back them off so we could run the ball. And we'll talk a little bit about the throwing game. But this is now true veer, uh, dive read, triple option stuff. And, and you just do a great job of it. You deal it to Lex. There's the uh, – Lex's pitch relationship and discipline's not very good here. He should be flat, but you get it, get it to him anyway, and uh, out he goes. And I mean, we're rolling on him. And this is, uh, I mean, you look at these guys down here, and I was watching them the whole first half when we were putting you in there, and uh, this was really disconcerting to them. In fact, uh, as you watch this go, I'll let you talk through it, Kyle, but. As you watch this go after the game, I said their head coach was a good buddy of mine. And I, I'll paraphrase, and I won't, won't put in the profanity, but Tom's a, a big offensive lineman guy, and he grabbed me up. I thought he was going to – I thought he was basically going to kick my ass after the game. He grabbed me, and he goes, he goes, the triple option? Are you kidding me? How could you do that in a week's time or week and a half's time? And, and the reason was because we had – good players that were smart guys and a quarterback that ran it in high school. So veer option, Kyle, go with it. Yeah, this was just a, I think just a basic outside veer. Um, trying to combo block with the, with the tackle and the, and the guard here up to the linebacker reading the, the outside end and um, double there yeah, up to him, leave the end, go to you, right? That's right. <laughs> so our big bruising quarterback against that defensive end unblocked and you did a great job with it. Get the ball to Lex. And again, our, our wide receivers. So this is John Talmadge. These guys were all recruited to throw the ball a little bit more than uh, than we we were going to in this game, and they were just flat told, "Hey, this is a blocking day for you guys." And uh, they embraced it. You saw it on the first play. You see it here. These guys did a great job of of getting after people. So that was uh, a good start to the game and and again they, these guys were on their their heels uh, the whole day we gave up a safety at some point here but we we kept getting off the field and you can see here we zone pressured 
from the field here and here. You're going to see this defensive end drops into coverage. They're going to run a little drive route. And this guy's coming under, and they're dropping in, picks this dude off, knocks him down. And that's where the quarterback's going to go if, if it's uncovered. He's on the ground, and, and we get there. So uh, just a, a great play by our, uh, by our defense. Quarterback's nowhere to go, and we kept getting off the field. So when you start looking at the scoreboard, we're kind of we're kind of in the uh, in the groove. They've got a nightmare going on for their defensive uh, players and coaches, and you just watch our guys coming off the edge and making plays. That's Shane McIntyre making a play, and we're swarming them. And and, and in my opinion, this uh, this game built from. Uh, a bunch of guys hoping we could manage the game and win to, hey, we're, we're maybe better than I, than, uh, than I thought they are going to be. And so, you know, we, as I mentioned, we had a great kick returner in Jefferson Heidelberger, and, and this is going on. Defense is playing great. Um, we're well into the second quarter. We get them backed up. We get them stopped again. And this is how we were going to win the game. And they've got to punt it away. They're back in their own end zone. and and they. They punt it to uh, Levander Seegers here, and Levander was a great punt returner. He had a great feel for it, and we'll just watch the sideline in the end zone and watch him go. A uh, lot of great blocking here. I mean, he's running over big guys, and he keeps his feet moving, and that's that's huge for a team that's not going to be able to throw it. Not going to be. It feels like they can't move the ball very well. You can see them, they're all, they're all, this pro-style punt protection, they're all packed in here. Nobody gets off the ball very well except the guy that we're targeted down the field on. And we get a good block. We don't clip. He's got one to make miss. He does, and, and now it's kind of on. Greeny, what do you remember on the sidelines at this point is maybe momentum as well. Like, when did you guys feel maybe comfortable? Because you know you're going in with just a, a game plan that's so unorthodox. When did you guys feel comfortable? Like, okay, we do have them on their heels. Was it this punt return to maybe set up going up by two scores? Well, it, it kind of it kind of happened all throughout the game, again, from the first snap and then went to – I mean, I, I can't I, – I vaguely remember the, the, the safety, but – we weren't nervous after having the safety and it was kind of like, we, we can, we can get it. We can go on these guys, you know, and we just, the, their defense was just lights out. And I mean, they, I mean, I, I just remember they're not every game in yards. All right. We just got to get it going. All right. We just got to get it going. We got to get it going. And then, you know, we kissed some momentum here with that, with that pump return. And, you know, we didn't kind of look back from there. So we, we get it down in there, punt return sets it up. We go back with the the fly sweep action, and you can watch all these players. You know, I mean, we went 80 on the first play on them, and as you watch this play, you can watch all these players really overreact with the fly sweep, and and Jr. gets it in, and you're going to see some some great uh, offensive line play. We're going to Derek Decker's our center here. Uh, we lost him mid season. Uh, to an appendicitis or a, a back and neck deal, excuse me. And but Deck was a great player and out of Huntley Project, and you're going to see him pull. And we we go fly sweep one way, and Decker and Jr. and our tackle Dylan McFarland pull here, and they don't have enough. They overreact, and Jr.'s in. So we feel good. We again end of the second quarter. Uh, we really uh, are doing a good job. It's playing out as we planned. And I think Chris Connors here forces a fumble in the middle of this thing. So we get a turnover and we keep taking it away from them. They just, uh, uh, they can't hang on to the ball. So it goes back and forth a little bit here. So 28 seconds left in the second quarter. And you're going to see here, we're at midfield, but our, our plan is to not screw it up. We're not gonna we're not gonna get there's 28 seconds left. We're not we're not into clock offense here. We're just we're gonna run it and we give Lex the ball here just on a horn play. 
toss look with the two pullers again. It's the same play we just scored on with the tackle in the center pulling. And Lex makes a heck of a run. It's well blocked. And now we're in business. So and I'll show you on the sideline here. So we pull our center and tackle. We're not in clock offense. We're just going to kind of see if we can pop a run. We do. Lex breaks a tackle. We get like a uh, a 20 yard gain here. And then all of a sudden on the sideline here, uh, you know, we're just going to run out the clock all of a sudden. Hey, now we got a good kicker and Chris Snyder. We call time out there and we go down and we move it in. And as you can see, we move it right down in there. And with six seconds left, Snyder hits a, hits a field goal and we go in uh, to the locker room 17, nine instead of 14, nine. So, that, that, that run was big because we, we were just, you know, our whole game plan was be patient, relax, don't panic, and, and uh, make it happen. So that was, that was, that was big. Um, so as the third quarter played out, uh, we kept getting the ball from them. So we, we had that fumble uh, late in the second quarter. We had another cause fumble here back in their end. And, you know, our, our, we're just – we're doing a lot of great things on uh, on uh, both sides of the ball and in the kicking game. So we're kind of winning in in all three phases. It may not be real pretty on offense, but it is. So we go third and seven down in here. After that fumble, we move it down in. And, again, you can see the fly sweep action. Watch the – I mean, the running back is going this way. It's just fly sweep action. You can see the whole defense – is going this way. I mean, the defensive end stays home, but nobody else. And third and seven, and and I think Justin Hartman's in at quarterback at this point. And I don't I don't know if we told him to just go ahead and run it and not throw it, but he runs it and we he gets it in the end zone and and all of a sudden it's it's getting harder on Idaho as well as we're playing in the other three phases. So the wrinkles we gave them on offense had them out of sorts, the fly sweep and the triple option. Well, the, the, the reason why he ran it, because in practice he threw it at the feet of the running back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure how confident he was in, as far as getting the ball out there. <laughs> yeah, on, on thir- so on Thursday in practice we didn't complete it wide open. So I said, hey, if it's open, you better uh, tuck it and get it in there, which he did. But yes, that was Thursday of practice. <laughs> well, you you recall anything else from that? <laughs> oh well, for uh, for TV, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right, very good. So we we, we get them again. Uh, they get they get the ball back. We're we're pulling away a little bit, and we run a just our standard field smash zone pressure. We get angling by the front. Drop here. You got Brent Myers going to come off the edge here. And Brent makes a great play. Comes off the edge, beats the puller, causes the fumble, and we got it again. And so at this point, you know, we're, we keep taking it away. We keep capitalizing when we give ourselves an opportunity. You can see, you can see Brent punch that ball out. We're on it. Uh, that is not a foam. It's a foam recovery, and they rule us down there. But we're, you know, midpoint of the third quarter, we're now up 24-9. And uh, we give it to uh, to Lex. He gets his pads down. They can't tackle him. This is really a, a great run by him. You can see the surge by the O-line. And they can't get him on the ground, and and he gets it in there. Now it's now it's thirty one nine, and it's like, hey, we're gonna win this thing if we don't if we just stick to the plan. So there it was thirty one nine. So uh, you know, and and we threw this on there, and this was more to the point where we felt like we had to win in all three phases. Uh, they were good at the kicking game and, you know, make it co- controlling field position here and getting them down on the 14 yard line. I just put this on here because, you know, Heidelberger w- returns kicks. He was the guy that went 80 yards on the first play of the game. 
that's Jefferson right there making that tackle at the uh, and being fired up about it at the at the fourteen yard line. And I, go ahead, Justin or Riley. I was going to say, no one's surprised here, Coach, that you threw on a special teams play, by the way. I think there's one or two every one of these episodes you've thrown on there. There's just no announcers telling you it's the Hulk specialty this time. There it is right here. Monty even understands. <laughs> Watch him. I mean, everybody knows, hey, they got to go to long field. We got a chance to win. So we, we uh, control field position. Uh, we get the ball back. And – so part of the plan was, and as I mentioned with Kyle, and you can touch on it, Kyle, where you threw a pick on a post, but it was 50 yards down the field. Uh, we only threw the ball seven times in the game. And part of it was we had called shot plays. So like right here, and Kyle, you, you go ahead and talk about this. If, if you're looking at this as a quarterback and you see the corner here and the wide receiver here, that's not a situation where you're going to throw the fade. And we had it called where we said, hey, we're going to chuck it and we're going to back them off because you can see you've got uh, the balls here. you got a safety at six yards, two backers here, another safety at seven yards. And we, we had to find ways to back them off, so we let it go. And we threw for uh, Kyle and uh, – and Justin threw for 92 yards on a day between the two of them. 48 of them were on this play. And it was always good to give Talmadge a shot or two at it. He's a big – he was – before the big-bodied guy at Montana at wide receiver, he was, and John made a great play there. Yeah. I remember, uh, you know, right before that field goal, when Snyder hit that before half, we, we lined up and ran a little option pass. And uh, John caught it, but remember they called him out of the back of the end zone. I was fired up. I thought I was going to throw a touchdown pass that day. <laughs> and I was running down. We we're all celebrating. And then they, they called him out of the back of the end zone. It was right by the goal post. But that was, uh, it was a hell of a catch by John. In the day of replay, you might have, uh, have a touchdown pass there in that first game. That's right. <laughs> so you can see Talmadge bodies him up, makes a great play. And, and is, again, every time we do this or make a move, on these guys, it gets harder. And then now we get to here, uh, 250 left in the fourth. We're still up two touchdowns. And I think we're going to see Lance Spencer make a sack. And we'll go the end zone here. Great job by Spence. Uh, when we run a little line game over here, a little TE game where the end comes behind. Spence does a great job. Uh, Winning, makes a move, gets them down, and all of a sudden the Grizzlies are uh, Grizz are in business. So we get the ball back. We we pound it down the field. Again, as Kyle mentioned, we're mixing stuff in, option, all this stuff. We, uh, again, this is fly sweep action, him coming across here. We don't have a, a, a bunch of offense off of it. It's more decoy than – anything else. I think we only handed it twice on the day, but they, again, watch them all. Every dude here is running that direction with the fly sweep. And Greeny, you rushed for what was the number on this day? 122 yards. 122 yards. And we're going to get to see the big fella. These might have been the uh, easiest seven on the day. Again, <laughs> it's the uh, fly sweep action. Horn play with the center and the tackle pulling the block downs. And that's a walk in for you. We'll look at it from the end zone here. So we're gonna we're gonna pull Decker and McFarland. Proctor's gonna block down, tight end, wing are gonna block down. We're gonna pull and in you go. Great stuff. That, that wrapped it up, man. The next highlights us lining up in victory formation and taking a knee. I was going to say, in game number four, I still can't believe that you decided to pull this out, the secrets all week. Kyle, I got to go back and at least ask you, the night before this game, how much sleep did you get? Because I, I know that 
But we know that for all of you guys, it was a different scenario going in. But Kyle, how much sleep did you get the night before? What do you remember morning of all of those things? Yeah, just, uh, you know, talked to my dad on the phone for quite a bit. And um, I don't think I got a lot of sleep for sure. I remember waking up early and we always had team breakfast. And then we went to, uh, you know, uh, team mass in the morning. Um, one thing, I, and I honestly specifically remember this, is that morning, uh, for the team mass, Shane McIntyre always picked me up from the dorms in his little yellow slug bug uh, on on game day mornings. He was one of my great friends there. And but team mass, and this is something that was pretty special. Is Coach Howe handed out communion that morning, um, and uh, it kind of honestly made a sense of calm when we always had our mass in the mornings before before the games. And um, but like I said, to me, um, I was nervous, but I had extreme confidence because of the people I was surrounded with. I knew I had a tremendous Offensive line, tremendous running backs, receivers. Like Coach Men mentioned, we had great tight ends, and we had a great defense. Um, you know, so I just knew I had to go in there and execute what I had to do. I didn't have to do anything special um, because I was surrounded by tremendous football players. And, and like I said, the thing, that, the thing that gave me a sense of calm and a sense of extreme confidence that we could get the job done is because those guys showed the confidence in me. Um, you know that I could go in there and execute and. Um, you know, that, I think that's a, a big part of why we were successful is just not because of me, because of the guys that were, I was surrounded by. And, and Greeny, how much did you get the sense going into this week that, you know, going up against Idaho, Coach Hawk mentioned it, the scholarship 63 to 85, but also knowing that you weren't going to play them for a long period of time after this, getting the sense just around the week with the coaches, how much did you feel that added importance going into this game for the little Brown Stein? Uh, a, a lot. I mean, Player wise, though, from player to player, the expectation was that we were going to win. I mean, I believe they won last year, the, the year prior to that. And they were kind of like, this is it. We need to we're going to go win this game. And, um, you know, we didn't have the same at least the older guys didn't have the same, you know, nervousness of it. They're like, oh, right, triple option. All right, let's do it. Or he was all right. We, we'll, we won't let him score. And that was kind of the mentality. It was never. You know, it was never a nervousness. It was never a, you know, a fear of what's going to happen. It was like, all right, this is what we got to do to win. This is what we're going to do. And, and that's, I mean, that was our, that was our O-line, our D-line. We'll do whatever, we'll do whatever it takes. This is what we do. Uh, um, Coach, do you, do you remember that you gave a spelling lesson in the post-game press conference in this one too? V-E-E-R. I think <laughs> I, I went back and read some quotes from you. You gave a spelling lesson in the post game. I, I don't remember that, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities. Certainly, uh, there's a couple things takeaways, and I, I'm going to ask these guys a question. Uh, one thing is, is <clears throat> now that Kyle was playing, we expanded our option package, and and I had several head coaches, Jerry Graybill at Weaver, uh, came up after that game and said, "Are you kidding me? Now you got the midline, and we throw we throw stuff in." against defenses and Kyle would come in and play eight or 10 plays a quarterback a game and they'd have to prepare for all this junk. It was a, it was really a nightmare. And, and I thought helped us out tremendously, even when we had Oaks back and Diz back and the whole deal. <clears throat> the other, a uh, couple other things later on this evening uh, up at my house, we did find out that the little Brown Stein does not hold water. It is not watertight. <laughs> so uh, we want to dispel that myth. And uh, you've got that up in the corner, too. We better point yeah, that out for everyone in the see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there over my uh, it's there. Over my left shoulder there. You can see it. It's, it's good to have that thing in our possession. And, and uh, much to Kyle's uncle's dismay right now, we, uh, we still have that in our, uh, in our possession. Um, and then the other thing I'd say, and, and to talk just, and, and this is where I'm interested to hear what Kyle and Justin think of what I'm, what I'm, my assessment of this game is, you know, we rushed for 344 yards, so almost 350 yards to their 83. Uh, I really felt like that established uh, a physically dominating identity for our football team. Uh, we only threw it seven times on the, on the game uh, for a total of 93 yards. Uh, and, you know, our, our wide receivers had to say, hey, we're doing this for the team, not because we're catching passes. And our defense had to understand that they had to stop people. We weren't going to outscore people. And 
our kicking game knew we had to win that phase and come up with plays. And to me, this was, I was overly excited after this game because it was a, a true team effort by our football team and total buy-in. And the reason I bring it up is I was really a, a, a young and inexperienced head coach. And there was some, I wouldn't say it wasn't dissension, but uh, coach Joe Glenn had left to go to Wyoming and I had come in and my way was different than Joe's. And that's fine. That's the way it is. No, no two programs are run alike, but some of the older guys on our football team were very comfortable with uh, the way it had been uh, previously and were less comfortable with the way I was doing it. And to me, this was the game where it all really came together. And, and I thought we had a good solid uh, team from the foundation up, but to me, this was the galvanizing point uh, that's from this point on really sprung us to a lot of great, great wins over the next two years, including a, a title game appearance in 2004. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think that, uh, like you said, I mean, uh, when coach, when coach got there, um, I was recruited, you know, by coach Glenn and, and his staff. And, um, I remember, uh, meeting coach out for the first time, um, right away. I think it was the first week of January. Um, you know, Co coach Glenn had left to Wyoming and, um, you know, uh, coach for me, it was, he, he still extended a scholarship offer and I was very proud of that and committed to him that first time I met him. And, um, yeah, I definitely think, um, you know, and, and I'll be honest with you, I think that's kind of what some of the things I'm going through right now as well as a, as a first year head coach at 35 years old, where uh, I think it's tough with the older kids because they know a certain way and they um, they've been used to a certain way. And uh, I think change is always difficult for a lot of people, especially the older kids in the program. So for me, um, I didn't know any different because, you know, you're the only coach that I played for there. Um, but I know just, you know, being in meetings and everything, I think there was some definitely some hesitation with some with some people just because it was different. Um, and, and everything was different than what it came before. Um, but I agree with you. I think that, uh, you know, at least in my opinion, um, like you said, this was the ultimate team effort where it wasn't a bunch of individuals going out and just, you know, we had some great individual performances that day. Um, but I think this was the ultimate team win um, where everybody kind of came together um, and said, hey, you know, we're going to sacrifice our personal gains for the, for the betterment of the team. And, and I agree with you, Coach. I think that, you know, that was a big stepping stone. Um, and led to a, obviously a tr tremendous amount of success that you've had there and, and the teams have had there. I know, you know, me and Justin were only there for that year. Um, and for me, I, you know, I always think, you know, what would have been if, if, if my dad would have never been to Northern and I would have stayed there. Cause I mean, I think it would have been a, a tremendous time, but I, I don't regret that by any means. And, um, you know, that's one thing that I would say too, with all that is that, uh, I was only there this year. Um, but I've been able to stay in close contact with coach and appreciate him always, um, you know, helping me and mentoring me as a, as a, as a young coach in this business. And, um, you know, I agree with the coach. I think this was a big, a big game as far as that, that team really believing in, in you and your staff and, and moving forward, and at least in my opinion. So there was, I'm not, I don't know anybody from coach. I mean, I know a few guys from, from coach Glenn's um, staff, but I do know coach Glenn was, you know, was very loved. Um, and you can you can you knew that you knew that from the players that that were around um, and what they how they talked about Coach Quinn, but he had a defensive coordinator and an offensive coordinator that were extremely uh, 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 what's the right word <laughs> um, that were very seemed to be very angry and always on edge and yelling all the time, and Coach Glenn was kind of the guy that was the mediator and, and all that. Um, and I think Coach Houck was kind of the, the exact opposite. He was kind of the one that brought the fire. And then his coordinators were a little easier as far as to deal with. So they hadn't really – there wasn't much that had left from what they had prior to. Um, so as far as that adjustment, they just had to adjust to the head coach kind of being the guy bringing the fire. Um, those guys – and that group wanted to win more than anything else. It didn't matter. 
offense, defense, they wanted to win. Um, and I think that was the overcoming part is what do we have to do to win? We have to figure out what it is, you know, as far as us adjusting to a new coaching staff, but we want to win. So we know that winning, we're going to have to be on the same page, you know, as far as the coaching staff, as far as us as players, and as far as these new guys that have come in. So let's get on, just get on the same page and let's go win. And, and, uh, you know, you look at all those guys. I mean, that whole offensive line was together, you know, all, all five years that they were there. And, and, and as far as them being able to gel the way that they did, and then they, they let want you, to win football games. Then they let you be their roommate. Right. I was, I was, I mean, on my recruiting trip, I was there, I was their room. My, I, that was my room where I was going to stay when I got there. They said, Hey, we got a spot open. And to me, that was, that was mind blowing. You got Jonathan Skinner, Dylan McFarland, Dane Oliver. Um, you know, there's, there were seven of us total in one house. Um, and for those guys to be ex accepting, they were, I think they were, they were all about, they were all about it. And it was, uh, it was fun to be around. That, uh, that group had a bunch of smart guys on, on, the, on the team. They were smart players. And as you guys just mentioned, all of a sudden they figured out, what do we, we want to win? What do we have to do to win? Uh, this is how it's going to be. And, I mean, Dylan and uh, Shane McIntyre are really, they're attorneys in town here. You know, Dane's a great coach at, at Sentinel High School. Andy Thompson played on our defense, has been a, a great football coach in our conference for years. There, there was a lot of uh, highly intelligent, tough-minded football guys on that team. And as I said, I, I think this game really pushed us forward, maybe um, to be better than that than this team was. Yeah, I mean, you're as good as your fronts. We had some good ones. <laughs> we did. Really, really good guys up front on both sides of the ball. No question. Coach, how much did this did this give you confidence? Just like, okay, we, we can settle into this season, the opening loss in the beginning of the year, we can kind of settle in and maybe just call it what it is, have you grow um, as a head coach and have more confidence. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I'm not sure confidence was ever the issue for me, but uh, how fast you can get everything in place. And then, you know, anytime you're – you're new in a conference. It takes you a year or two to get through the cycle and know everybody, see everybody, see the recruiting. So for me, rather than uh, confidence, I think it's more about a comfort level. And, you know, you, you know, in, in our interaction, Riley, last uh, over the past two seasons, last year and then the year before, I mean, you and I would go and do our prep for the week, whether it's a radio show or our pregame show on Saturday morning. And if we hadn't played a team, I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know their personnel. I didn't know their coaching style. I hadn't seen them up close and impersonal. And, the, and then this past year, much more comfortable. And, I, I you know, I, I'd go to our UC Davis pregame to where the, the year before, it's like, wow, these guys are really good. I don't know how we're going to respond, how it's going to go to this past year. And, you said, well, you've got to play the number three team in the country. I said, no, they got to play us, man. And I think that's where kind of after this Idaho game, we got, in my opinion, my comfort level with our football team and where our program was is, hey, everybody's got to play us. Great comparison on that front. And this, we got to leave this in now because we talked about it at the top. But Kyle Sampson leading the program at Montana Tech. And, Coach, I know, again, in our interactions, we, we've talked about uh, Coach Sampson and, and his run through the ranks here a bit. So uh, I'll give it to you about how, how proud you are of him and leading a, a football program just down the road a little bit. Well, obviously, from a young age, Kyle was around the game. And then he, he showed uh, a real acumen for the coaching part of it. I mean, I'll go back to – the week of prep for this foot, this particular football game we just reviewed. Uh, he just had a great understanding of it. You know, I've Kyle and I have been in touch uh, since he left here, whether when he was in college or working for his dad or taking the job at Flathead High and all the different things he's done uh, right up to deciding to go to Tech last year and then his opportunity to be the head coach there. And um, I'm going to let him talk about how things are going at, at Montana Tech, but Kyle's uh, 
a great football coach, a great football mind. And I just think they're in a good man and a good person, a good family guy. And I just think they're really lucky to have him to be their head coach at Montana Tech. So how are things going down there, Kyle? <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that, Coach. And um, yeah, they're going really well. I mean, obviously, with everything going on, it's been it's been a little bit of a different thing. Uh, my first year and my first spring, um, you know, being the head coach with not really having the ability to to see our guys in a long time. But, uh, you know, you got to adapt and you got to do what you can do with what we have right now. And, um, you know, I think the number one thing I wanted to do is, is surround myself with, with, with a very good staff. And I think I've done that. Um, guys that are extremely loyal and, and, and really want to work hard here for Montana Tech. I think we got a, a great administration here um, that wants to see Tech continue to, to be very successful. And, and that's the thing. I mean, um, I'm not walking into a job that I've got to rebuild or, um, you know, Coach Green and Coach Morell before me have done a great job with this program. And, and I'm just excited. I mean, it's been a, been a goal of mine to be a head coach. And um, I got a lot of work to do. Um, but just proud to be here and proud to represent Montana Tech. And, um, you know, I wouldn't be here without the, the mentors um, in my life in the coaching profession. And, and one of those guys is Coach Houck. Um, like he said, he's, we've had numerous conversations and, you know, he was down in San Diego and down, went down there and met him. And, um, you know, one thing that I'll always remember coach for you, and, and this is a, a big props to the person that you are is um, I was having some health issues in, in, up in Kalispell and coach was up, um, you know, doing a, a recruiting trip through Montana and, he personally stopped in my house um, just to check on me and see how I was doing. And I was, I was going through some tough times and that meant a lot to me. Um, you know, we sat there and talked for an hour and a half. He didn't have to do that. Um, but uh, you know, pretty, pretty cool now to, to have him back at, at university of Montana, um, you know, and uh, him and his staff have been great to me and, and our staff, as far as helping us out with different things and um, you know, sharing some things with us to help me. And I know personally he's coach has done a lot for me. Um, you know, as far as helping me in my career and giving me some great ideas and, and some mentorship and uh, something that I'll always be thankful for and uh, just hope to keep getting a little bit better every day. And, um, you know, always love watching and following the Grizz and following Coach and, um, and, coach, and coach Green. And, um, you know, just more than anything, just wish you guys the best of luck. Um, and I just appreciate you guys, you know, giving me an opportunity to be on here today. You guys uh, all are staying busy during this time, despite the uniqueness of it in Coach Green, I'm not going to let you get off this call without talking about the newest future Grizz here. I, that, that post went viral, though. You've been, you've been pretty busy been in dad mode as well. Yeah, it's been great. Um, you know, uh, this is a time normally that I'm out recruiting. Uh, so to be home, be able to help around the house and play with the youngster and, and uh, be, a, you know, be a dad and do the things that dads get to do. And uh, it's been awesome. It's been awesome to, you know, have him, you know, talk to you and look at you. And when he hears your voice, you see, you see him perk up. And, you know, I, you know, my, all my kids are five years apart. So uh, those are some of the things that I miss, you know, from my, from my first two. So, uh, uh, and then having, having a boy um, is definitely something, something special is because, you know, you, it's all, you're, you're, it's your namesake now, you know, so it's, it's neat to, to be home and be around and, and uh, it's, it's cool. It's pretty neat. He hasn't uh, sent that letter of intent I sent back yet. What's the holdup? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's on the way. It's in we, the mail. Got, Checks in the mail. All right. Yeah. The class, of, the class of 2038 or something yeah, like something that. Like we'll, that. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Coach, I'll give you the last word on this uh, but while, while we wrap up edition number six. How are you doing? You going a little stir crazy a little bit? I know you're chomping the bit to get back on that football field soon. Well, I am. Uh, I think that we need to get our guys back to work, be my personal opinion. And this has been really fun. I mean, I've enjoyed the heck out of this. And as Kyle mentioned, all the Zoom meetings and the rewinding these games, never would have had a chance to do this. So it's been a great opportunity. But uh, fact of the matter is we need our guys around us. As we love coaching because we coach kids that uh, – uh, we work with on a daily basis. So hopefully we get back to work and we're ready to go soon. As we wrap up edition number six of Grizz Classics Chalk Talk, it's been fun going through the famous triple option game with Kyle Sampson, Justin Green, as well as Coach Houck. Stick around. We will have more editions of Chalk Talk down the road here on GoGrizz.com. Go Grizz.